Okay, good morning everyone. This is Uma coming to you with another UVVL video and today we're going to talk about owning being single. So um, I had an interesting event happen recently and I'm going to play with the, uh, <laughs> the blinds as I talk to you because it's kind of like nerve-wracking to put yourself out there on blast and share your vulnerable moments in life but here I am doing it yet again two weeks later. So I reconnected with an old friend from high school and we were just chatting the other day and catching up on high school and um, you know we started this Facebook group on you know on social media where we're everybody from my high school is just kind of like staying in touch and getting in contact and it's been nice it's been bringing up some old memories good and bad that's high school right and I called my friend because I forgot we had a classmate that did die tragically while we were in school and it was he was a very loved loved um person and everyone adored him but i forgot how he died so i called my friend to just kind of check in and be like hey how did this person pass and then he reminded me how this person passed and i was like oh okay yeah that's right that's what happened so then we got around to talking to each other and i you know checked in asked him about his wife and his kids and you know and everything else and he asked me about my partner um and then here comes the question right so when are you two getting married now i know people hear this all the time like when they're in their 20s you know if you're dating somebody it's like oh when are you getting married or if you're even if you're 20s your 30s when are you settling down right i was kind of surprised to hear it in my 40s because i thought i'd been through all of that um i did get married i did have kids i did do the whole shebang get the house and the white picket fence and all that kind of stuff so i guess part of me assumed that after I got my divorce and I became a single mom with my kids, still living in the house with the white picket fence, I just kind of assumed that that was out the window and I could kind of be free to do what I wanted to do. So this this uh, question kind of jolted me a little bit. And whenever I get jolted, I don't know what you guys do. Some people shut down. They don't say anything. For me, I tend to talk more and excessively <laughs> because I get nervous. I don't know what to say. I, I get jolted. So I started saying, well, you know, um, We've been together for five years and it's definitely on the bucket list, but you know, we're not nowhere near there because my partner has his own house and I have my own house. And when you're older, um, you tend to be comfortable with your lives, especially with how hard we work. So, you know, it was, um, I, I felt like I was caught off guard. And then I, as I was talking to my friend, I noticed, I said, wow, you know, my partner and I, we've been together five years. This is actually the longest relationship I've ever been in. And my friend laughed and said something to the extent of how tragic. And it was a pause moment for Uma because it was a pause because I realized that that's the conditioning on this planet, that we need to find somebody and we need to settle down even if it's not gonna work. I mean, how many marriages do we know out there that are suffering or people suffering in silence or people are just not happy, but they just, they choose to stay together for the sake of the children or the mortgages or the comfy lifestyle or whatever else it is. So it was interesting to me that my choice to leave relationships throughout the span of 20 years of dating um, wasn't seen in a more kinder light, actually 30 years, because I started dating when I was 10, I know, shoot me. And I thought it was interesting that it wasn't seen like heroic or courageous or brave. It was seen as how tragic. So that's what the video is about today. I couldn't care less. I've enjoyed my life. And I, I always say I've had over 30 partners in relationships and I've loved each and every single one of them. And I've gained so much knowledge about myself, about them, about people, about relationships in general in being in those relationships. Um, I think I'm in a place now where I'm ready to settle down with my current partner and we have so much in common and it just feels good and it feels right finally, but you never know. And even if we were to break up, just say, I don't think I would feel like it was tragic or it was, I'm doomed. I just feel like I'm being committed to myself and to always allowing myself to grow and to prosper and to be real and vulnerable you know, to say, hey, this isn't working out. I'd rather leave than try to make it work. So this is really a message for the single people out there because I'm understanding, even though I'm in a relationship, I'm understanding just how hard it is for people to understand 
the need for self-happiness, self-sufficiency, self-care, self-love over the need to fit in or to be part of something that sometimes you're not 100% signed on to. I can't speak to my friend's relationship. You know, according to Facebook, they look fine, they look happy, right? But we all know Facebook stories. All I can speak to is it's just interesting that we tend to see single people as their story is tragic because they haven't found somebody to settle up with. I happen to think people who are single and into their 50s and 60s are just fabulous. And I've always told my partner, because he's 10 years older than me, I've always told him, you know, you're probably going to die before me unless I just really, you know, um, bite the bullet due to whatever, whatever I'm doing. And I said, and then he's like, well, he asked me, he's like, would you move on? And I said, I don't know. I actually feel really comfortable with living that golden girl's lifestyle at the end of my life where, you know, I have a home or maybe have tiny houses on a property with all my girlfriends and we just check in on each other, we read books, we all have cats, and we just live out the rest of our golden years. Um, and it's my perspective. It's not for everybody, but it's my perspective. So I guess with this video, what I'm trying to say is, is be happy being single. And if you don't have the concept that marriage is your be all end all, or being with a partner is your be all end all, then be happy about that too, because I am. And I love my life, I love my life with my partner, but I hella love my life alone as well. When my partner and I don't see each other, we're happy. He is a caveman in his, uh, you know, lake lake house in the woods, and he loves being there by himself. And I'm a Renaissance woman, if you will, sitting on my couch watching my Netflix shows and just having snacks and chilling. So, be happy where you are, and don't worry what other people feel or think about what your status is in a relationship. We don't know where they're coming from. They could, it could be old programming. It could be conditioning. It could be jealousy. It could be envy. You don't know. And the thing is, is the most important thing is, is you don't need to go into it, why they say what they say or what they feel. I know for a fact my friend is not jealous of me or not unhappy in their relationship because I know, I know this person. I know that they're happy and I know that the relationship is a good one. I feel it's probably just programming, you know, that we all need to kind of find that personal settle down and just chill for the rest of our lives. I don't know. So please leave your comments. Tell me what you think about this video. And if you agree with me, if you're single, does this resonate for you at all? And if you're in a, if you're part of a couple, still feel free to speak out, you know, does this resonate for you as well? Um, if you're new to my channel, please feel free to click subscribe, follow me and get some more daily doses of truth, rawness, and realness from Uma. Thanks guys.